house of God this morning. Yes. This morning we're going to talk about some of the names of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, when you get married, your name change. Amen. When I got married, my name changed. Yeah. So in the same way, when we get saved and we come to be part of the family of God, when we come to be part of God's family, we assume the names of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what he is, we are. Hallelujah. If you are saved this morning, I want you to say what Jesus is. What Jesus is. What Jesus is. What Jesus is. I am. What Jesus is. I am. What Jesus is. I am. Hallelujah. If you believe that, put your hands together for the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. And not just that, not just the name. See, when you assume somebody's name, you assume the problems and you assume the blessings. Amen. When, when you get married, the Bible says that two shall become one flesh in intimacy. And after that, God, when, when the marriage is consumed, God sees the two of you as one. Amen. And that is why God said, what God has joined together, let not man put aside, including the two of you. Amen. You shouldn't work against each other to put that union away because God doesn't like it. Hallelujah. Amen. What am I saying? When we become what Jesus is, we assume whatever blessings he got on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We get everything that he is. Paul said in Ephesians that we are seated together with Christ Jesus at the right hand of God, above all principality, above all power, above all rule, above all authority, above every demon that has a name, and again, above Satan himself. Hallelujah. Yes. And so when we become saved, that is what we become. Locationally, we are seated above with Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. So this morning, we are going to dissect a little bit, a number of two, two, three, four, five, Amen. Amen. Of the names of Jesus Christ. And I believe that as we study this together, we will become it. Hallelujah. Amen. So that we can manifest the kingdom of God in our generation. Amen. Are you being blessed? Yes. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Jesus is talking about overcomers. Amen. Jesus in Revelation Three doesn't talk about dropouts. Amen. Back home, when we go to uh, elementary and and we go to uh, middle school and high school, I kind of don't remember too many dropouts. Amen. Right. But here, I, I hear that the, the numbers are high. Amen. Jesus is not talking about uh, if you are a dropout, you are not going to overcome. Amen. If you go, if you if you want to become a doctor and you, and, and you go through school and you do the uh, college education and you do the MCAT and then you are taken on and you go for just five years, you are not a doctor yet. You are, if, if, if you go for five years and you, you call home and say, mom, dad, I'm tired, I can't do this anymore, they have wasted their money and you have wasted your time. You are not a doctor yet. If you go for six and a half or six to a quarter years, you are not a doctor yet. And even after that, you have to go for residency to see human, real human beings being cut up. Amen. I don't think I can stand that. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to complete your assignment to be called a, to, to, for you to graduate. Amen. So in this scripture, Jesus is talking about those who have gone through life with him, those who have gone through different kinds of persecutions, those who have allowed God to train them, those who have allowed God to mold them through their situations in life as overcomers. And he said that when you are able to overcome, when you are able to complete this school, this divine school, he's going to do something, amen? He's going to put the Father's name on you. He's going to put the name of the New Jerusalem on you. And he's going to put his new name on you. Amen. That means that after all that Jesus has done, we know that 
at this point, he has been given a name that is above every name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? right. But here he said that God still has something more for him. And if we come over, take it. If we don't drop out, amen. Say, if I don't drop out, I will see the new name of Jesus. If I don't drop out, I cast out every spirit of drop out in this house this morning in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer. Say, I'm an overcomer. Jesus will work with you. If you will work with him, he will work with you so that you can graduate. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me go ahead and read the scripture again. He said that he that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name. Amen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. To see some of these names, hallelujah. John was on the island of Patmos and God took him into heaven and these are some of the visions he saw. Amen. The Bible says in verse 11, And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Amen. So one of the names of Jesus is faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he alone. And he was clothed with vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, and white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the white press of the fierceness of and wrath of the Almighty. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Why are names important? When, when you are given a name, you are given an identity and you perform a function. Amen. Amen. If, I, if, if I go to um, Golden Corral and I get a plate of spaghetti and, and, and meatballs, that's not my favorite anyway, but just an example. I can't come here and take the camera as my fucking spoon. Amen. I can't even go into my bag and take my phone and use it as a fork and spoon. The fork and spoon is what I can use to eat. If I want to make a call, what do I get? A phone. Amen. If I want to sit down, what do I get? If I want to take a picture, what do I get? If I want, if, if I have a problem with my eyes and I want to see, what do I do? Hallelujah. Amen. So, your, your name identifies you and it gives you a function. Amen. So when the Bible says that Jesus is faithful and true, that means that when you are his, no matter what goes on in your life, the Bible says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I mean, these days there's so much unfaithfulness all around. People are divorced. You, you can't divorce. I mean, they, I, I know men, some men, let me let me say it right. I know some men don't treat women well. And some women also don't treat men well. Amen. But when you get into that black covenant, God is expecting you to stay. Are you being blessed? You can't leave your spouse. Amen. The Bible says that even if they, they fool around and they repent, the Bible recommends that you stay with them. Amen. We are very quiet this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. If your 
if your spouse is abusing you, that is why we have nine. What do we have? What do we have? Let him go and sit in the cooler overnight. And then he will touch you. Are you being blessed this morning? But God says that when, when, when you come together as a married couple, we shouldn't see you with another woman. And we shouldn't see you with another man. Amen. Amen. You can't leave if your spouse, because I know some of the women are also strong, they also beat up the men, right? <laughs> if somebody is being abusive, you can call the police. The Bible tells us in Romans 13 that the police are an arm of God. Who has ever read that? The policeman with his gun on the road is an arm of God. The judge with a stick is an arm of God. If you don't want to call the police, you have to bring him to the pastor and the elders for correction. Hallelujah. Don't stay there and die or don't leave. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can't leave. Amen. And, and you see, God never tells us to do something that he himself is not doing. His name is faithful. And so he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That means that Jesus loves us so much that even when we make mistakes, he's there. To help us out of it. Amen? Amen. If we have a problem with sin, he is there to get us out, not to keep us in it. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is faithful. He, he doesn't say that, oh, yesterday you didn't pray. Oh, for the last month, you have not that you shouldn't be praying. Okay? <laughs> but maybe for some reason you haven't been able to pray. Jesus hasn't gone away. Hallelujah. He said, no, nothing can separate us from what? The love of God. And that is why we shouldn't take that kind of love for granted. Amen. The fact that you, you were not able to pray for a week and Jesus wasn't there doesn't mean that you should keep doing it. He is there to help you to come out of that situation. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? So Jesus is a faithful God. Amen. And he expects us to be to be like that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. The Bible says that God confirmed Jesus. Amen. He confirmed him by saying that, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. And we know that throughout the Bible, God kept confirming Jesus like that because Jesus was a, a malleable person. Do you know what a malleable person is? A malleable is like this handkerchief. I can make it into any shape that I want. Amen. But I can't really do anything with this pulpit because it is set. Amen. That is how, we, that is how God can change us and mold us for example, if you want to be a doctor and you tell everybody you finished, um, I don't know why I'm a doctor today. Somebody wants to be a doctor here? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, so you 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 tell your you're supposed to do the M cut and you do it and then you fail and you said you are not going to do it again. You are set. Amen. You have to keep doing it. You have to. You, you have to change. Maybe maybe there was one question that you didn't answer well. You have to go and hit at it until you are able to answer that question. Amen. But when you are set and you are one plug, as we say it in my country, if you are one plug, you don't want to change your mind. You don't want to change your ways. You are set like this pulpit. There's nothing that we can do. Amen. But somebody who is crafty can make this handkerchief into a bed. And change it around and make a, 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 an aeroplane out of it. It's malleable. Amen. Like uh, the kids have clay dough. Clay dough is malleable. They can. That is how God is. If we are sent, there's hardly anything he can do. Amen. And how do we know that Jesus was that kind of person? Let's go to 
Look. Look chapter 2. Look chapter 2. Jesus and his parents 51 to 52. Jesus and his parents went into the temple for a festival and when it was done, Jesus stayed behind to talk to the, to the Pharisees and the elders and the doctors and to answer their questions. So John and Mary traveled three days and they couldn't find him, so they had to come back. And when they came back, Jesus told them, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business, right? But after he said that, Jesus did something. The Bible says in 51, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and the Bible says he was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. Amen. Amen. Even though Jesus knew who he was as the son of God and the power that he had, the Bible says that he went home. And when Mary told him to sweep, he swept. When, when, when they had to go to the farm to get something, he went alone. The Bible says that he allowed himself to come to our level and to be trained as such. Amen. So if we don't humble ourselves and we don't allow God to train us, we cannot assume the names of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to have his character to be able to assume his names. Are you being blessed? Yes. If you are set in your ways, if nobody can tell you nothing, nobody can correct you, nobody can say anything to you, God can't even say anything to you, there's nothing he can do with you, basically. Okay. Amen? And when it happens like that, you can't assume the names of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are here this morning to find out how we can do that. So we have just found one. He went home and became subject to Mary and Joseph. He listened to what they told him. He did what they told him. And because of that, he grew up. He became a wise person because he obeyed his parents. Are the kids here? Are the kids? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are the kids here? Yes. Amen. God says you should obey your parents in the Lord, right? Amen. For this is right. Honor your father and mother so that your days will be what? Long. You see that Jesus did it. He listened to, he created Mary and Joseph. Amen. He created them, but he came down. He humbled himself and did whatever they told him. And because of that, he became wise. So if you have godly parents and you listen to them, you become wise. Hallelujah. And he grew in favor with God and in, in favor with man. What does it mean? It means that the people around him, as he was growing up in wisdom, they were happy with him. And most importantly, God was also happy with him because he subjected himself under Mary and Joseph. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hebrews 12. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 that and God has certain disciplines for his children. Amen. And if you don't allow him to take you through those disciplines, he calls you a bastard. Who is a bastard? Hallelujah. I believe there's no bastards in this house. Amen. God has certain training that he takes his children to. And, and it, was, it was no different for Jesus. Amen. It was no different for him. That is why he won the award of the new name. Amen. And if we go through those disciplines with him, we assume those names with him. Hallelujah. I'm reading Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about the so great a crown of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which that so easily beset us, 
and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus had something in his mind when he decided to be born as a baby and subject himself under the authority of men, amen, and to grow up. The Bible says that because he had the throne of God, he had the right hand side of God's throne as his objective, as his aim, he endured the beatings of the Romans. He endured the pulling of the beard. The men here, has anybody ever pulled your beard? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That means it must be very painful. But the Bible says that because he had the right hand seed of God in his mind, he endured. The Bible says that they beat Jesus to the point where you couldn't recognize him. You, if you saw him, you couldn't tell that this was Jesus. That was how badly they beat him. But he had a motive. Amen. So again, if you want to become a doctor, God bless all those who want to be doctors Amen. and let them be doctors. Amen. Amen. If you want to be a doctor and some subject is hard, you have to play around it. Because one day you want to be called Dr. Something. Amen. Where you get all the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amen. In the same way, Jesus had an aim. He had an aim, and because of that aim, he endured the training of God. He endured the cross, the painfulness of the cross. He endured it so that he can be seated at the right hand of God. Amen. Sister Franca saw God the Father, and where was Jesus sitting? Hallelujah. He made it. He overcame. And that is why the, 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 his new name can only be, be given to those who overcome like him. Hallelujah. If somebody is proposing to you and you don't say yes, you don't accept the knocking fee, your parents don't accept the knocking fee, there can be no marriage. There has to be agreement. You have to say, yes, I'm going to marry this guy. And even on the engagement day, they will call you out and ask you. Your father will say, hey, this person is saying they have seen you and talked to you and want to marry you. And in front of everybody, you have to say yes. If you say no, you cannot be giving that person's name. Hallelujah. So if we don't overcome, that is why Jesus started the whole scripture in Revelation 12 with those who overcome, if you overcome, if you overcome, then you will have the new name that I have. Hallelujah. Are there any overcomers in this house this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. So verse 3, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Hallelujah. Oh, did Jesus, I mean, did he suffer contradiction? I mean, can you imagine these uh, scribes and Pharisees who he made? And he was, the Bible says that he holds all things. Hebrews 1, 3, he holds all things by the word of his power. Hallelujah. So as they were beating him and spitting on him and lying on him, they were, he was still holding them together. Isn't that wonderful? But he endured it, amen, and he overcame. Amen. The Bible says in four, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, amen. Has anybody here ever been stoned witnessing? Oh, wow. Has anybody here been shot witnessing? Has anybody slammed the door in your face witnessing? Yes. Oh, so there are only two people who witness in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying that we haven't resisted yet to bleeding. So we don't have any excuse. Jesus bled. Amen. And he died. And he endured it because of the right hand seat. And the blessing of the right hand seat. So if we want it, we, 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 we also have to 
endure the little something that we endure, like getting up early to come to church. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Be in, in church on time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That is a little suffering that we have to go through. Telling your colleague by you about Jesus. I mean, she hasn't slapped you yet. The best she can do is say, I don't want to talk about it. Hallelujah. But Peter, James, and John, and the apostles of old, they died for what they believed. Maybe we are not dying because we don't believe anything. Maybe we are not effective witnesses because we have not fully believed. Hallelujah. I mean, there are some Jehovah Witness guys who come to my door every, say, three months. Amen. And they always put me to shame. Amen. They don't have the true gospel, but they are out there winning souls. What about us who have the true gospel? Are we witnessing? Are we telling people about Jesus Christ? The Bible says Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Amen. Amen. We need a walking about in our lives this morning. Hallelujah. We need to walk about with what we believe. Are you being blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. So that's fine. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise thou, not thou, the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorcheth every son whom he receiveth. Amen. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Amen. Paul is saying that if God is correcting you, it shouldn't put you off. Amen. For example, if you are somebody who is hot-tempered and always angry, maybe people are, are, are always doing that because God is trying to deliver you from that devil. Amen. And then if you are delivered from that devil and there is no opportunity to get angry, how do you know you are delivered? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? So when God is correcting us, how is he going to correct us? He's going to correct us and discipline us with circumstances and the people that are around us. And the closest one is the spouse. Amen. And our children. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is why I think it was so bad that only Lot made it into heaven with all his righteousness. His wife didn't make it and his children didn't make it. That is so sad. Amen. And I pray that the men in this church will go to heaven and take their families with them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So circumstances, circumstances around us, the, thing, the people around us, that person who is getting on your nerves so much, maybe your nerve, God wants to keep putting water on the nerves. Amen. So that the nerves will cool down. Amen. Hallelujah. And that will be a chance. I mean, if there is no opportunity to get angry, you will know you are delivered or you will not even know that you have that problem. Amen. So things that happen to us every day, our dealings with our boss, our dealings with our colleagues, those are what God is going to use to train us. Amen? Amen. As sons. Because the Bible says that if you are not being disciplined of God, then he doesn't recognize you as his child. He doesn't recognize you as his son. Amen? That is why we have to endure it. I remember some time ago, a couple came into this family and uh, it wasn't easy. Amen? But, <laughs> I can't give you the details. 
to this. I'm trying to spin around this story. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. To give an example. And we, at that time, we thought it was so bad. Amen. We thought, God, why did this person come here to do this? See, it was good. After six or seven years, we sit down and we realize that it was good that person came into the ministry and did that. Because after them, other people who are more powerful than him have come. But because of the experience we had with that couple, we are able to treat the others better and know what to, and know what to do. You understand what I'm saying? So every situation that comes in your life, the Bible says that all things work together. That's a whole new sermon on this room. Everything, if you are a child of God, if you are a, a son of God, every situation that comes your way, God is using it to mold you. He's using it to bring you to a point of overcoming. So that person that insulted you, it is working out for good. That person that stole your wallet, it is working out for good. Are you being blessed? Being fired on that job, it must be working out for good because maybe God has something better for me. Maybe he has a better position and a better job for me. Are you being blessed? All things work together for good in the life of the sons of God because God is using all this to bring you to the point of overcoming. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that if, if, if you are not coming against any situation and you are just there, that means that God doesn't know you. He doesn't know you and you are just there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that that will not be anyone's situation in this house this morning. Amen. Amen. Are you being blessed? Yes, yes Lord. So let's go to John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by him. So if we are looking for truth, then we have to go through this right here. Because this is the word of God. And Jesus is testifying about himself here that he's truth. Amen. That means that opinions don't matter when it comes to the word of God. Are you being blessed? My circumstance and my opinion don't really matter when it comes to the word of God. Amen. If, if, if I'm not being healed of my headache, it doesn't mean that God doesn't heal. Are you being blessed? If I have a friend that is an atheist who doesn't believe God, the Bible says that it doesn't negate the word of God. Amen. If you have people who don't believe God for anything, it doesn't mean that God is not true. Amen. So if we want truth in our lives, then we have to bring this through meditation into our spirits. Amen. Say meditation. 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 Pull Joshua 1 verse 8. It is so, see, we don't know what God has said in his word because we don't read it. What is the normal thing that people do when they wake up in the morning? Uh, thank you, my brother. You get up, you just take a bath and do quick breakfast and you are in the car to the job. Right? Amen. How many times do we meditate? How many times do we really read the word of God to know what is in it? Again, we have all kinds of prayer points and we have uh, apostles and prophets and teachers. Those are the five ministries that God has given the church to bring the church to perfection, to bring the church to sonship. To train the church to be sons. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God told Joshua that this book right here shouldn't leave your mouth. But you shall meditate and you shall matter it. You shall speak it. You shall speak it. Amen. Say speak it. I'm not talking about contemplation. 
I'm not talking about just standing there and you know, just thinking about the head. No, that's not meditation. Meditation is the word not departing out of your mouth. You're speaking the word out. Day and night. Amen. How many times? Day and night. Every day and every night. In the morning before you step out. In the evening before you sleep. Amen. That thou shalt, I mean, after all, think about it. You can't do something you don't know. Right? If we don't know the commandments of God, we, we can't perform them. So maybe that is why we are not living right, because we don't know what God says. Are you being blessed? Yeah. And then talking about demon possession and all that, the Bible says that when you meditate upon the word of God day and night, for then thou shalt make that way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good senses. What are some of the impediments that we have in our lives? What are some things that hinder us? The devil, sin, yes. <laughs> what are some impediments in our lives? Things that hinder us. Does somebody say what? Amen. Sickness, disease, worrying, and God says not to worry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God says that when you meditate upon the word of God, if this right here becomes your prayer point, day and night, the Bible says that every impediment will be moved away, including the devil himself. So if you are looking for a prayer point, this is it. Day and night, you do it. You'll be ahead of the prophet. And you'll be ahead of the apostle. If not closely behind them. If you do this, hallelujah. Because when you do this, the Bible says that this is the word of God right here. Another name that Jesus had in Revelation, they called him the word of God. He's called the word of God. John 1 says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Hallelujah. Amen. So this right here is, is, is Jesus. So if you speak him out day and night, what kind of devil can stay when you are constantly speaking Jesus into your life? I'm telling you guys, we don't need any prayer points. It's right here. Day and night, concentrating and thinking on the word of God. It will kill every disease. It will kill every infirmity. It will cast out any devil. Amen. Are you being blessed? Yes. Are we going to do it? Yes. At least we're going to try. Amen. We're going to start. Hallelujah. He is the word of God. And we cannot know the word of God un un until we begin to read it. Amen. I mean, I, I, I don't know anything. Well, I, I wasn't too good in science in school. Amen. So I, if, if you bring me a chemistry book right now, I mean, I can't help you. Amen. But there are people who are good at that. Amen. And they excel at that. God is a God told Joshua. In the Old Testament, that if you read my word day and night, if you speak it out day and night, there is nothing that can resist you. And you succeed in everything. So, how do we lose that act? You know, back home growing up, I thought that meditation was contemplation. But no, meditation is not contemplation. Meditation is going around speaking the word of God. Just muttering the word of God. Amen. Muttering the word of God. This book of the Lord shall not depart as often as day and night. Amen. And then you can go ahead and contemplate. But see, God didn't tell him to contemplate. God told him to meditate. Hallelujah. And if we do that, the word of God Let's go to Hebrews 4 verse 4. I mean, what is the word of God? 
We know Jesus is the word of God, but Hebrews 4, verse 4, what, what, what does it say about the word of God? So why are we chasing prophets for prayer topics? What you have it right here? Are you being blessed? The prophet has a part in our life, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about meditation at this point. Amen. God told Joshua when he kept, he was still mourning after Moses died. And God told him, hey, Moses is dead. Get up. Amen. And do what you are supposed to. And that is the point that he told him what to do. Get up and start meditating on my way day and night. And you don't need Moses. Are you being blessed? Meditation, brethren, meditation, meditation is not for Buddha. It's not for fat Buddha. I don't know if Hindu is slim. I don't know how he is. Slim. Amen. It's not for him. It's not for the Eastern religion. Meditation is right here in the Bible, right? Oh, we are somewhere else. Hallelujah. Meditation is in Joshua 1. Did we all read it? It's in the Bible. See, we can't allow them to take the word of God and use it because it's um, spiritual principles and natural principles will work good or bad. And it is who is giving will still be blessed. He claims that God doesn't exist. God calls him a fool anyway. But if he gives, he will be blessed. So if you if you worship fat Buddha and you meditate, you will go to the highest height on that side. In this, it's, it's for us. Amen. Say it's for me. Meditation is for me. It's for me. Our prayer point is right here. I don't know how many times I'm going to lift up my Bible today. Amen. It's right here. Amen. Let's go back to Hebrews 4:12. I wish I knew you kids in this house. I mean, you are so blessed. You are so blessed. We never knew about face to face growing up. We never really talked about. We knew we knew to have a quiet time though, but we didn't really know about meditation. Amen. The Bible says that the word of God and who is the word of God? The Bible says Jesus is quick and powerful. So if you meditate on the word of God. Will Satan be able to stand that? I mean, he's quick and powerful and he's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hallelujah. So the, the word of God is whole. Amen. It doesn't need any additions. It doesn't need any subtraction. Amen. If we meditate upon it, it doesn't matter your, it doesn't matter what your problem is. Jesus will be quick and sharp to fix every situation in your life if you will meditate on him as the word of God. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews 1 3. Quickly, please. Hebrews 1 3. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. So this scripture is saying that Jesus is the one holding everything. Jesus is the one holding my body together. Jesus is the one holding this chair together. Jesus is the one holding this building together. Jesus is the one who is holding this earth together. Amen. He's the one who is holding all the galaxies out there together. Amen. So if you have him in your heart, what can stand against you? Nothing. Amen. Let's begin to incorporate the acts of meditation on the word of God. Not on TV. Amen. Not on, you know, movies and stuff. Hallelujah. 
but of the word of God. Are you being blessed? The Bible says also that Jesus is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. Let's go to Luke chapter 12 quickly. Luke 12, 42. If Jesus is a king, that means that He has a kingdom. And that means that He's reigning. Amen. 42 says that, And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom His Lord shall make ruler over His Household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him what? Ruler over all that he has. Hallelujah. So if we are faithful as he is, he begins to allow us to rule and reign with him as kings. In his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's go to Philippians 2 5 to 10. I read, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made like in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and in the earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall convert, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So if we go through what he went through, then we reign with him. Hallelujah. In uh, Romans 8, 17. Let's go to Romans 8, 17. Romans 8, 17 says that if we suffer with him, then we will reign with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Amen. Amen. That is why it is so sad when some couples. They struggle together and then God blesses them with the money and then girlfriends come in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The money is not for the girlfriend. Amen. Amen. Just like how, see, Jesus suffered because he had God's right hand as his final spot. Amen. He had that in his mind. And because of that, he's saying that if we also suffer with him, if we go through life, not compromising. Amen. For example, if you want to be a doctor, <laughs> we must be getting some doctors in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. All the nurses should go and continue and become doctors. Amen. If you want to be a doctor, hallelujah. And there's and 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 for example, amen. This a lecturer is coming after you. He says that, you know, allow him to do what he wants to do so he'll give you an A. Are you suffering for Christ? You are going the way of Cain. You are going the way of Baal. Amen? Don't do it. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said if you suffer with him, you will do what? You will reign with him. If you take the easy way, if you, if you jump through the window, God calls you a thief and a robber. You have to come through the door. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you being blessed? So if we suffer with Christ, if you can't get some things because you are a believer, if you are not able to get some things because you believe in Jesus Christ, it's okay. Amen. It's fine. You don't need that Bentley. You, you, you can't have three jobs just to get the benefit because your neighbor has it. And then we don't see you in church. 
church. There's nobody here like that. Amen. Amen. We don't see you in church anymore. Because you have three jobs. I don't know how people do with them. Woo wee. Oh, I'll crash. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we see it over and over again. Some people don't know they don't have jobs. They come, we pray, they get the jobs, and, and God doesn't see them. It's not even about us. God doesn't see them anymore. So was it good that you were jobless or is it good that you had a job? <laughs> Are you being blessed? Yeah. Are you being blessed? Yeah. See, God should be a priority. Because when these eyes are closed, he's the one we're going to see. And your job wouldn't matter. Allowing that lecturer to do what he did wouldn't matter. I believe this message is for somebody. Don't allow him to do it. God will take you through. God will take you through. Don't succumb to that temptation. Hallelujah. Suffer with Christ and you will reign with him. Are you being blessed? Yeah. Because, I mean, in these days, that is why the devil does them. Um, the world don't know the difference between Christians and them. Because we are compromising as much as they are. I mean, there is, there's a sister here. She had a job, and they were going to pay her $7 more than what she was making. And she just told them straight up, I go to church on Sunday. So I can't take that position. How many of us should be able to do that? And I'm telling you, she's being blessed. Amen. Because you know what? When, when, when you work that hard, that $7 is going to the emergency room anyway. That $7 is going to end up over the counter drugs. Ibuprofen. 1,000 milligrams. So was it good that you took it and forgot about God, your maker? The Bible says that the word of God is sharp, it is powerful, it is quick, cutting asunder soul and spirit. Amen. Amen. There is nothing that Jesus can do for you if you stick with him. Amen. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen the righteous begging for bread. Not yet. If somebody has come to me after service, amen. And I'll give you $20. Amen. 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 God is faithful. He is. He might tell you to give up everything you have to serve him. You have to count the cost because it's not easy. You have to count the cost. But, I mean, if you deny God what he wants to do with you and you cross over, as I keep saying, when, you, when we cross over, the one you disobey is the one you're going to see. And, and there's no coming back. Amen? Amen? There's no coming. If you keep disobeying God, you won't do what he tells you. I mean, because you, you, you must, must, and you must have that mansion. You must, and you must, and you must live in that neighborhood. Amen. You must and you must and you must keep up appearances. Amen. You have to keep up appearances and let everybody see that you are rich. So you know, so you do three jobs. I still don't know how to do. I mean. Hallelujah. But God told Joshua, you don't need Moses. All you need to do is to speak out my way day and night. And every impediment, did they specify the impediment? No. Every impediment, which has a name, and we just read that the name of Jesus has been lifted up above every other name. Amen. Because of what he suffered, it didn't just come to him because he was the son of God. It didn't just come to him because he was our savior. Amen. He earned it. Somebody say he earned it. He earned that name above every other name. So if you suffer with him, you will be raised above the principalities and the powers in your family. They can't touch. 
because you are suffering with Christ. They can't kill you. I said they can't kill you. Yeah. If they can't kill you yeah. if you suffer with Christ. Are you being blessed? Yeah. They will come begging at your feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So if we suffer with him, we, will re we need to stop compromising. We need, as Christians, we have to be straight. Amen. The people on our job must testify that this sister is a believer. They, when, 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 when they go grabbing for overtime, you go get overtime and then God doesn't see you in church. Because anytime we come together, the angels are here and they keep a record of everybody who comes. The time they were here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They do. The offerings we give, the attitude with which we give, they write everything down. And they take it. Amen. So we have to stop compromising. And if we are Christians, we have to be Christians the old way. Because God has it, God is not a 22nd or 20, whatever they say, century God. He's ancient of days. And he doesn't change his rules for anybody. Amen. I believe that this word is touching somebody. Amen. Don't be afraid. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. I, I can't tell you how. But he always takes care of his own. Yes. He does. Yes. He does. He does. Yes. He does. And you don't want to spend eternity regretting that you disobeyed God. You don't want to do that. Because maybe there are thousands of souls that you only have to save. Maybe there's a million somewhere that only you can save. Hallelujah. Don't waste your time on earth. Amen. Yes. Spend it being a true Christian. A true believer filled with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, because of what Jesus suffered and because of the name that he has, even when we are asking God for stuff, Jesus said we have to ask in his name. Let's go to John 16, 23. John 16, 23. The Bible says, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye ask, ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give you. How many of us have asked stuff in Jesus' name and have received it? How many of us have asked stuff in the name of Jesus and have received it? Hallelujah. Amen. So we can't even go to God asking stuff without him because of what he went through, because of the name he has earned. Back home, our kings, you know, they might come on with their own name, but when they go to war and they win a battle, they are given their own names. Amen. They earn names. Amen. I mean, Jesus could have chosen not to go to the cross. He, he could have chosen in the middle of everything to say, Lord, I'm tired. Let these 12 legions come in. And then God's plan will be messed up. But he didn't do that. He went forward and did everything he had planned with his father to do. And because of that, he earned that name. And we, we, we can't even go to God asking stuff without him. Amen. Finally, let's go to Romans 8.28. It is so important that whatever goes on in our life, we have to know that if we are people of God, if, if you have been called, if you are saved, then whatever goes on around you, good or bad, is working out for your good. It is working out for your good. Amen. God said in Isaiah that he chooses us and he refines us not with gold, not with silver, 
But he chooses us and he refines us in the furnace of affliction. And that's what he did with Jesus. He refined Jesus and he took him through the cross. A shameful death. You know, the pictures that we see of Jesus, they covered him up. He wasn't covered up. They put a shameful death there because he was naked. But see, they can't have that out there for everybody to see, so they just make it nice. But Jesus was naked on the cross. Amen. So whatever goes on in your life, maybe you couldn't pay your light bill, or maybe you, you, your, your water bill got cut off because you are in the process of obeying God. It's going to bring out a testimony, and it is working out for your good. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe the devil thinks that he has chewed up all your children and your womb is, uh, is, is shriveled up and, and there's nothing that you can do. Sarah had a child at 90 years. Amen. God can do it again. Amen. He can do it again. Amen. He can do it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that happens in a believer's life is God working stuff out for good. The devil thinks he's about to destroy. No, no, no. If the devil knew and if he understood, he would leave us alone. Amen. So that we will even have any testimonies. But thank God that he doesn't get it. So he's still going to persist. But out of that, is the, it is working out for our good. Amen. Say, it is working out for my good. It's working out for my good. It's working out for my good. Let's be, let's be on our feet and, and begin to pray. Father, we thank you that all things work together for good for those who love God and for those that are called according to your purpose.